folks, Ashley HealthThingsDentistry.com. This is part two of an alveoplasty video. I'm going to take a second to sort of describe more of uh, the preclinical workup. So Aaron here is at rest, and normally patients, when they're at rest, their lips contact each other. In his case, they don't. We call that lip incompetence. So it appears, and you'll see in one second, that Aaron's maxilla is positioned just a little more anteriorly. So those anterior teeth uh, have been long extracted and we were waiting approximately four to six months when you'll get the most resorption of the ridge following extraction to see how much resorption we'll get. We placed a provided after extraction of those anterior teeth, several anterior teeth, there's a video on online up, we provided him, delivered a an immediate provisional partial denture which is in the picture right now. Now again, unfortunately he's at rest and the immediate partial denture was based on some cast surgery, just removing some teeth. So we are aiming to provide him an aesthetic restoration or prosthesis and also attempt to try to get some uh, lips at rest. And he said that he didn't have this issue when his teeth were okay, say 30 or 20 years ago. So in an effort to do that, we're going to provide him some alveoplasty and we'll provide him a, mac, a complete denture. Now, what you see in front of you is a cast that's been surgerized by Dr. Dre. And he removed, I have some video of him, and it was sort of just his experience and the LAR, LAR effect sort of looks about right. Removed some of the, uh, the stone in an effort to predict where we want the denture to sit. So we base, I fabricated a stent on this that you'll see being used intraorally. And this is the ridge before we, or preoperatively. So it is fairly far anteriorly positioned. And we want to be able to place teeth in an aesthetic manner and also provide him uh, lip closure. Okay, so we're going to continue on with part two of the video. Now um, we've pr completed the alveoplasty procedure and we're just going to try in uh, the surgical stent after we've removed some, of the alve uh, removed some of the osseous tissue and see if there's anywhere that's binding. Now this is again a fairly rough guide, but it enables us just to get a view of if we need to make any contour changes, if there's anything that's really standing out. So it looks about right. We have sort of a generalized uh, blanching of the tissue all over instead of just one or two spots. And now we're going to suture. So here we are. This is just a review um, about cleaning, cleansing, irrigating underneath the flap. Now you can see we're using regular irrigation. We'll do it three times. It's a tip that I learned from my oral surgery mentor for all types of Surgical, surgical procedures, especially those used involving uh, creation of osseous de debris. So as you can see now, we're using Copeland suction while my dental assistant's refilling with a syringes, 30 milliliter syringe, and I'm getting underneath the flap to remove any debris. I was reading in Peterson this morning that he acknowledges definitely that it's important to remove any of the debris to prevent uh, sequestration or de slowing down the healing process so we can continue decreasing the amount of time between surgery and prosthetic rehabilitation. So then what we'll do is we'll rinse first, suction underneath the flap, then two more rinses. And you can see we have now have a plastic su suction tip on there called a Yankauer. It just, it's a really fast way of removing the uh, irrigant from the oral cavity. Okay, so this next segment see me suturing it's actually I really want to talk about the excess soft tissue now once you do the re osseous recontouring there's a, and we did a significant amount there's going to be a significant amount of excess soft tissue now, Peterson recommends and actually Dr. Parchers is also talking about it recommending uh, removing that excess tissue one of the clinicians I've talked to suggested not nah, to worry about it it'll resort back and heal back to where it needs to be but one of the one of the problems with that is that it, that's an increased amount of time for healing. So I initially went by the one clinician's or his advice 
and didn't remove any of the soft tissue. And you'll start to, at this point, after my suturing, I'm starting to feel that there's a, a significant amount of excess soft tissue. So right about here, I decide to remove these, uh, these sutures and remove the excess soft tissue. Now, how much do you remove? Uh, that's one, more one of those looks about right techniques. And you can see here that just underneath, it's just a huge amount of flabby tissue or excess tissue. So, I mean, there are different ways of doing this. I just simply, as you can see, use the blade and my adsum forceps. You could do this preoperatively, i.e. remove the soft tissue by making an incision if you have an idea. There's a thousand different ways. You can use scissors, and this is just one. So the, the key point is to remove that excess tissue so you allow faster healing for the patient. Now additionally, what I would have done as well is, and Dr. Partridge was talking about this, was instead of using horizontal mattress sutures or interrupted, just use one continuous running suture. And the reason why you would do that is, as Peterson says in his textbook, it's less discomfort for a patient because of less knots. And definitely that rang true in this case because each time I saw Aaron postoperatively, it was those pesky knots that were tender when we took placed his denture back in and took it out. So just continue with the soft tissue removal and then approximating the flaps together and trying my best to allow for primary intention and healing. Okay, home stretch. Finishing off the suturing. Now hopefully you can tell by the in the video how much less uh, how much less mobile that the uh, soft tissue is once we remove the that excess. So we're hoping to better approximate that uh, soft tissue to the to the bone and speed up the healing process for Aaron. So once we're done this, we're going to be uh, delivering an immediate denture. It's just a sagittal view of the uh, osseous crest. It's fairly hard to tell if it's how much it's reduced because of the I mean it's just immediately postoperative. Additionally, here's just sort of an occlusal facial view, just showing approximation of the tissue, essentially. It's hard to compare. And finally, delivering of the denture. Now, he did gag somewhat, and that I helped, the gagging was relieved by reducing the posterior border of the denture. It was, it was fairly thick. And we're going to have this have him keep that in for 72 days. We're going to see him back in 24 hours uh, initially, and then three days afterwards. And then the patient will keep that in, like essentially a Band-Aid for the entire time. And here are just some still shots. You can sagittal view. You can see we still don't have lip closure after placement of the denture, but we'll have to reevaluate down the road. And again, uh, just a frontal view. So hopefully that helps in understanding alveoplasty.